Production on Stargate's television shows was a sprawling enterprise, employing hundreds of people to make more than 350 hours of entertainment. Stargate was a cornerstone of the Vancouver film and television industry for over a decade. Every once in a while, though, something slips through the gears of that well-oiled machine. A production goof makes it unseen through the layers of filming, editing, and post-production, and onto our screens. And of course, Stargate fans are there to notice. Here we're running down some of our favorite production goofs from Stargate SG-1 and Stargate Atlantis. The last one on our list is the very best, and once you see it, you'll never be able to unsee it. So stick around all the way to the end of the video. Now, these goofs don't detract from the show's greatness. We nitpick because we love, but they are fun to look for that hundredth time you watch a classic episode. And let's be clear, we're not talking about the tiny little things here. Inevitably, there are going to be plenty of times where a camera light is visible in the reflection of Daniel's glasses, or a military rank insignia is incorrect on a uniform. Sometimes the number of illuminated chevrons on the Stargate doesn't match what Master Sergeant Harriman is calling out. And on rare occasion, an actor simply transposes two digits in a planet's designation number, so that P3X989 becomes PX3989. Those aren't interesting enough errors to make our list. Are there more you've spotted? Check out all 10 on the list, and then add yours to the comments below. Here we go. Number 1. Moving Tattoo the Enemy Within, SG-1 Season 1. In the show's earliest days of filming, every member of the production team, from the actors and directors to the keyest of key grips, were still getting to know the characters, their styles, and their distinctive looks. One thing that grabbed viewers' attention right away was Teal'c. He's big, he's stoic, he's an alien, and he has a gold emblem with a serpent on his forehead. Actor Chris Judge was even painted a subtle golden color and wore guy liner in the early days. The tattoo of a first prime, that gold emblem on his forehead, also evolved over the years, and the makeup team figured out how to optimize the forehead appliance that Judge wore on set all day every day. In this case, the goof is a simple oversight on a single day of shooting, and this is the first regular episode after the pilot movie. When Jack O'Neill enters the room to talk to Teal'c, the symbol of Apophis is on upside down. You can keep looking for it for another 10 seasons. We're pretty sure this is the only time this one slipped through. Number 2. Easy Pass. In the Line of Duty, SG-1 Season 2. In this scene, Teal'c confronts a Goa'uld prisoner in a cell at Stargate Command. The alien creature has taken Captain Carter as a host, but Jolinar of Malkshur has something shocking to tell him. She is not a Goa'uld, but Tok'ra, part of a legendary underground movement that opposes the Goa'uld. Stunned by the news, Teal'c turns to quickly exit the room. But look closer. When he uses his security pass to unlock the door, he slides it through the card reader with the magnetic stripe facing out. Of course, the door opens anyway. Would you say no to this guy? It's one of those moments that is so quick, so totally secondary to that plot bomb that's just been dropped, that you probably missed it the first time. But once seen, that backwards security card can't be unseen. Number 3. Zat Magic. Family, SG-1 Season 2. We're really ragging on Teal'c here, aren't we? Just as the production team gradually developed a character's look, so too did it take a while for everyone to remember how to use Stargate's signature props consistently from episode to episode. The Zat Gun was brand new, having made its first appearance in the first season finale. In this scene, early in Season 2, Teal'c and SG-1 have rescued his son Ryak from Apophis, who brainwashed the child and turned him against his family. With no other options, Teal'c and his wife Dreyok agree to subject their son to electroshock therapy. In this case, that means a single shot from a Zat Nicotel. Incredibly painful, but enough to wipe away the enemy's brainwashing. Watch closely here when Teal'c fires the weapon, though. The serpent-shaped Zat is supposed to uncoil and fire from an open position, but when it fires in this scene, the Zat is still closed. SG-1 used multiple versions of the prop over the years. The background zats were a solid piece cast in resin, either open or closed, but with no moving parts. 
The hero's ats could be opened by an actor, and in later years, they were advanced enough to be opened and closed at will. In this case, we're not sure if Chris Judge just forgot to press the button, or if the props master handed him a zat that couldn't open if he tried. Number four, the aliens must be hangry. The Ark, Atlantis season three. The spin-off series Stargate Atlantis was not exempt from the occasional production gaffe. This one is evidently an item left behind on set by an actor or a crew member, something that has no business at all being on an alien ship in the Pegasus galaxy. Colonel Shepard and his team find a colony ship built inside a small moon, with mostly antiquated technology, but also the last survivors of a century-old fight with the Wraith, who used Wraith beaming technology to store the patterns of more than a thousand people. Inevitably, things go sideways, and Shepard must take the helm and try to steer the moon to a safe planetary re-entry. But check out the alien control console just past the 15 minute mark in the episode, as Herrick swivels into the shuttle control systems to ignite the engines. Next to his hand, is that… is that a Snickers wrapper? It looks like even aliens in Pegasus need to satisfy their hunger now and again. When Shepard comes back to the panel later in the episode though, the sneaky snack evidence is gone. Number 5. Trash from Around the Galaxy Condemned, Atlanta Season 2 there seems to be something about sweets on the set of Atlantis. The Ark actually isn't the only time a wrapper made its way all the way from Earth to a planet in the Pegasus galaxy. Early in Season 2, Shepard's team takes a puddle jumper through the gate and finds that while this civilization lives mostly on the mainland, the Stargate itself is on an island that serves as a penal colony. That's because the corrupt leaders are sacrificing their criminals, or folks they just don't like, to be fed upon by the Wraith in order to save their own skin. At the start of the episode, our team doesn't know this yet, so they land the jumper on the island and try to make some new friends. This is right before Ronan tastes their stew and they all get shot at with arrows. As the team approaches the disheveled colony of prisoners, there's trash and disused metal strewn about not only from this world, but also evidently some imported from Earth. Yep, that's an Oreo cookie wrapper on the ground. Maybe it was someone's request for their last meal? Number six, Uniform Code, The Serpent's Lair, SG-1 Season 2. We'd seen the sarcophagus work its technological magic a few times by the time SG-1 reached the start of its second season. It healed both Daniel and Share in the feature film. So when Daniel is shot and mortally wounded by a Jaffa staff blast on board a Goa Wuld mothership coming to attack Earth, he realizes he might have a way to survive. While Braytac and the rest of his team escape the ship before it explodes, Daniel drags his bloody self to the onboard sarcophagus. And when he pops out, right as rain, it's not just Daniel himself that has been healed. The alien healing device has also stitched back together his clothes and his gear. His walkie-talkie is even looking shipshape. Hey, we should keep some of these around just for fixing our stuff when it breaks. Number seven, wormhole switch. Prodigy, SG-1 season four. So they film the actors going into the Stargate on one set, and then on a completely different day, they shoot them coming out of the Stargate on an alien planet. Isn't it kind of amazing that the continuity here is nearly always perfect? Nearly. To try and help a brilliant young cadet who is on the verge of washing out of the Air Force Academy, Major Carter offers Jennifer Haley the opportunity to see the future that could lie ahead of her. Haley is brought to Stargate Command to see the interstellar program firsthand, and even step through the gate to M4C-862. Now, wormhole physics long established on the show dictate that anything that goes into a Stargate comes out exactly the same way on the other side in the same position and even at the same speed that it entered. In this case, the women managed to do a little switcheroo while en route. Did you see it? Carter and Haley come out of the wormhole standing on opposite sides of each other. Watch it again, in and out. That is one magical wormhole. Number eight, City of the Future, 1969 SG-1 season two. The team is stuck in the year 1969 sent back by a solar flare that bent the Stargate's wormhole back in on itself. Now they have to travel from Colorado to the east coast of the United States. 
To get there, they'll get some help from a couple of classic 60s hippies, Michael and Jenny, who are on their way to a concert in upstate New York. For you kids out there, that's Woodstock. There are a few montages to show the team and their companions crossing the country. When they drive through the great city of Chicago during one of their travel montages, editors chose a familiar shot of the Chicago skyline with the iconic Sears Tower. Unfortunately, well, the Sears Tower did not exist in 1969. Construction was started in 1970, and the building opened its doors in 1973. I guess maybe the show is set in a parallel universe where the tower was built earlier? Number 9. Landing Zone. Double Jeopardy. SG-1 Season 4. The show's visual effects team faced some tall orders from the writers over 10 seasons and two movies. But this one was a doozy. Double Jeopardy ends with the downfall of a system lord, and SG-1 takes possession of his Hatak-class mothership. In the final shot, the script calls for the massive Goa'uld vessel to land atop the pyramid on the planet Juna. The challenge? How to land a pyramid with a three-sided base on a four-sided platform. There are, of course, four-sided pyramid ships in the Stargate universe. Ra had one in the feature film, but they're rare on the TV show, and the zillions of shots of Hatox over the years have clearly established that its underside has only three sides. The final shot adopts a perspective that carefully conceals the flawed landing plan. But boy, on touchdown, that must have been wobbly. Number 10, Peekaboo Carter, Revelations, SG-1 Season 5. Here's our favorite goof that you can see in the final cut of the episode. But in this instance, it's only visible if you're watching the widescreen version that's on DVD, Blu-ray, or streaming on Prime Video. Thor has been captured by the Goa'uld Osiris, and Jack O'Neill and Teal'c sneak on board her ship to try and rescue him. While they move stealthily through the corridors, Sam Carter guides them by radio from the safety of a hidden Asgard facility. Things get dicey for our heroes when Jaffa patrols corner them. Sam has to think quick. She projects a hologram of herself onto the ship to distract the Jaffa. That gave actress Amanda Tapping a reason to be on set with the boys, and it's why in one shot, you can actually see her crouching off to the side of the corridor as Jack and Teal'c walk past. This one is fun to look for since it's an actor caught where their character isn't supposed to be, but it actually has a logical explanation. Like other shows of this era, SG-1 was originally broadcast in a 4-3 aspect ratio but it was also filmed so that the episodes could later be presented in widescreen. Monitors on the set were marked with boxes for both 4.3 and 16.9 framing, so that the director could see what was in frame for both aspect ratios. A 4.3 framing keeps tapping out of frame in this shot, and that's probably how this one slipped through. The goof wasn't even visible to viewers when Revelations first aired on cable, but only later when the show was released in widescreen on DVD. There you have it, 10 production errors from Stargate. Have you seen another interesting or funny production goof we didn't mention here? Stick it in the comments below, and if you want to be really kind, leave a timecode from the episode so we can go and find it. While you're down there, hit the subscribe button to get all the latest Stargate videos from GateWorld. We're trying to grow toward that big 100,000 subscriber milestone, and every time you click the like button or share a video with your Stargate-loving friend, it helps a lot. A huge thanks to everyone for watching this far and for supporting the channel. Meanwhile, you can also visit us at gateworld.net for all the latest news and special features. Thanks for watching.